Leasing Hotline to get us set for the NFL Draft here on Sean, RJ, and Bobby. Good morning, brother. How you been? I've been good. I've got uh, uh, my PR people. They, they've put so many of these uh, interviews on my plate, and I said, you know what? My my guy is down in one oh five three gotta be first. All right. We, we gotta do them first on the beast release day. It's been a while, but uh it's good to talk to you guys. My PR people. My PR what a great? long way he's come. Yeah. Oh, oh, I had to fight them. I had to fight them because they were Broadus was trying to come hard and I was like, No, 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 no. Uh, come on in the morning first. And Dane was like, Of course, I like you better than Brian. Uh, yeah, I don't care about are you still in Ohio now? Yeah, I'm still in Ohio. We've got we got four kids now, so we, we put down roots uh, close to my parents and, and my wife's parents. Need the extra help, so uh, but it, it was great being down uh, for the Shrine Game. Uh, East West Shrine Bowl was in uh, at the start this year, and that was uh, it's always a great scouting event. But it was awesome being back in Frisco and seeing a lot, a lot of people. And so anytime I get a chance to go back down there. I'm always going to take advantage of that. All right, I don't care about any of the picks of the players. What has been on the smoker, or has that been in the garage with four children? Yeah, you know, it, well, and also up here, uh, you got to worry about the elements a little bit more. So yeah. in the winter time, don't get to use it as much. But uh, that, that's why I love this time of year. You know, obviously we got the draft, uh, Masters coming up here, but it, it's the weather starting to break here in Ohio. So uh, definitely. Coming up here the next few months, doing a lot more of that. Uh, I mean, beef ribs, uh, mm -hmm. brisket. I mean, you can't can't beat that. So, I mean, I, I'm not doing it as much as you, but I mean, <laughs> your family's growing too. I know they are. They are. I got the got, got the other. My 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 smokers gonna be put away here in about a month for a while, no doubt about that. Dane, put a label on this draft the way you would define it in terms of strengths, weaknesses. How would you how would you label this draft class? At premium positions uh, in the first round, I think that it's going to be dominated by quarterbacks, wide receivers, offensive tackles, uh, a few corners mixed in, a few edge rushers. But we're going to see those premium positions just fly off the board. And I, quarterbacks suck up all the ox oxygen every year, right? Uh, and that's not going to be any different this year, especially with uh, Caleb at one. Uh, and then probably we're going to see quarterbacks two and three, and then maybe even quarterback at number four. Uh, it's just a matter of what's the order going to be and who are the teams picking those quarterbacks. Uh, we know Caleb Williams is going to be a Chicago Bear with the number one pick. But then what do the commanders do at number two? Uh, a lot of intrigue around that pick. Jane Daniels kind of feels like the favorite. I think it should be Drake May. To me, he's the second best quarterback in this class. And then what do the Patriots do at number three? Do they just stick and pick? Do they get a big enough trade offer where they want to get out of there and uh, get a chance to recoup a lot of uh, draft capital as they kind of rebuild that, uh, that, that roster in New England? And then uh, who takes J.J. McCarthy, assuming he's the fourth quarterback? Is it the Giants at number six? Do they trade up to four to get them? Uh, that we know the Vikings want to get a quarterback. Do they have a strong enough trade offer to go up to number four to number five to get that quarterback? Uh, so a lot of intrigue around these premium positions, but especially the quarterbacks at the top. Dane, where do you stand with Caleb Williams and are some of the character issues a legit concern in your opinion? You know, I, the the painted nails don't care. The the crying in the stands don't care. I, shows me he, he shows me he does care. It shows me he's passionate. It shows me he wanted to win that game so badly that he was so broken up about falling short. I, that that's the kind of competitor I want. Uh, the the only concerns that I would have with Caleb in terms of off the field is this guy wants to be an entrepreneur. He wants to be the Jay-Z of the NFL. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're winning. And so it's not put the, the cart before the horse. Let's make sure we're doing everything we need to do on the field, uh, within you know your new organization. You're winning over that locker room. You're stacking wins before you start putting all these deals together and want to be the, the face of the NFL. That's that's great. He's he's had a plan. Him and his dad have had this plan in place since he was 10 years old to get to this point. And so it's all about staying focused and being doing what he needs to do. The talent is there. There's no question. Uh, does need to clean up the fumbles? Absolutely. Needs to clean up some of the decision making? No doubt. 
but all the talent is there for him to be a top five to seven quarterback in the NFL. And at the end of the day, that's the goal. If you have a top five to seven quarterback in the NFL, that's, that's all you can ask for. That's going to help you compete for Super Bowls. So if you're the Bears, you're, you should be very optimistic. Uh, but if I were to have any concerns off the field, it would just be uh, you know, his ambitions away from the game as well. Who's your comp for him? He is, uh, there's not a great apples to apples comp. You see, you could see a little bit of, you know, some Aaron Rodgers with the way he operates. Um, I, the comp I've been going with is, is a karaoke version of Patrick Mahomes, uh, where you can, they're very, they're, they're different, but stylistically with the way they want to play the game, where it's a lot of off platform, it's a lot of creation, it's a lot of, that's not quite how we drew it up, but. I'm going to trust my instincts. I'm going to trust my football awareness and I'm going to go make a play. Um, And can he be more consistent working on schedule from the pocket? That's going to be a big thing for him, especially coming from that Lincoln Riley offense where, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of first read stuff. uh, And if it's not there, you're going to move your feet. You're going to in the pocket, outside the pocket. So just being uh, developing his decision-making from inside the pocket I want to see that get a little bit better, but you can definitely pick up a few things that you see from Patrick Mahomes. And I don't say that lightly. Uh, You know, I know it's, it's easy to get carried away with comparisons, but uh, it's hard to find a apples to apples comp for a guy like Caleb that you just absolutely love. Dane Brugler, NFL draft analyst, the athletic joining us here on 105 through the fan is our path to the draft brought to you by Pluckers and Zero Res. Our quarterback show fight of the uh, draft season is J.J. McCarthy. Uh, Sean has completely put him in the Carson Wentz <laughs> category of he's KP, can't play. Uh, how do you like grade a quarterback that isn't asked to do a lot, but he goes to the combine, he's got some tools, and, you know, all right, I mean, he's got a good arm. Like, what do you think of J.J.? Yeah, I'm a Big Ten guy. So growing up in this part of the country and watching this Ohio State-Michigan rivalry, Ohio State dominated it for so long. And then when J.J. kind of came into the mix, it was kind of like, uh-oh, okay, Michigan's for real. And it, he showed it in those games. Uh, yeah, this is an offense that is really built around the ground game. It's built around offensive line, winning the trenches, but on third downs, fourth downs, when they needed him to make a play, he made it every time. And, you know, we saw it in the Rose Bowl against Alabama where he stepped up in the final two minutes and drove him down the field. Uh, and, you know, he did everything that was asked of him. So it's not a case of he can't do it. It's a case of do you wish there was more of a body of work? Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, we have to take with what's on the tape and project that out. So – there's a little more projection involved with J.J. McCarthy than most quarterbacks. There's no doubt about that. But and so there's there's risk involved. But at the same time, I can understand how a team would bridge that gap based off of the tools that he offers. The thing that's going to set him apart is the intangibles. That's, and I've been saying this for uh, for a while now. Once coaches get involved in the process, they're going to just be won over by the way he carries himself, uh, the toughness that he plays with. Uh, and, and I know fans hate quarterback win loss record, but it, it, you know thirty six and two in high school as a starter, twenty seven and one in college as a starter. He had a state championship in high school, national championship in college. Those things matter to NFL teams, and so this guy's going to go. It's just a matter of is it going to be a team trading up the four? Could the Patriots surprise everybody taking like three? Um, I, there's going to be lumps, uh, especially if he starts as a rookie. But three, four years from now, I, I can understand how if he'd be a uh, B-plus starter in the NFL, I think that's a realistic outcome for him. Dane, everybody at this point seems to be settled on the idea that the Cowboys are going to take offensive line in the first round. And that because Tyler Smith's flexibility to go guard or tackle and the opening at center, that they really could fit center, left guard, or left tackle with their pick. How would you just kind of give a brief overview of the type of offensive line that you think would be worthy of the selection at 24 and which guys you think will be in that range? Yeah, I, I mentioned how the, you know, the premium positions, that's going to really be the, the focus of the first round, and especially these tackles. We're going to see six, seven tackles come off the board. So it'll be interesting to see who's available for the Cowboys at 24, who's still left. 
Um, I think that's going to uh, decide the direction the Cowboys go more than anything. It's just who's available for them. Is it going to be one of these tackles? Uh, do they like Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma? Do they like him enough to take him at 24? I mean, six, seven and a half, 322 pounds, really good athlete, former uh, defensive lineman, tight end who made the switch to offensive line. And it, it, the talent is not the question mark. It's more just can he settle down, stay controlled, and, and execute. And, and we saw at the Senior Bowl him execute at a high level, doing it against NFL pass rushers, obviously a much different animal. But he has the talent to do it. So, uh, you know, I think that'd be – the preferable way to go. You add the left tackle, you can keep Tyler Smith a guard, and then, you know, you figure out center. Uh, this is a strong center class. Uh, I think, you know, Graham Barton from Duke, Jackson Powers Johnson, Oregon, Zach Frazier, West Virginia, those three guys are at the top. And I think all three would be in that conversation at 24, but they don't have to go that direction if they don't want, if they don't get that center first, they could wait and go the Tyler Biotis route where they wait to the fourth, fifth round and get a guy like uh, Bo Limmer from Arkansas or Hunter Norzad from Penn State, Tanner Bordellini from Wisconsin. This is a really good center class where you don't have to necessarily go get that guy early and feel like, uh, you know, you're going to be left out if you don't. So then the, the Cowboys are in a spot where I think we feel good about who they're going to draft in terms of position. We just don't know who it's going to be and what order they're going to draft. We know they're going to draft a tackle, or, or at least we're going to know that they're going to draft two offensive linemen in some shape or form. We know they're going to draft a linebacker. We know they're going to draft a running back. It's just a matter of where they draft them. Is it going to be in that first round, second round? Uh, and then, and I think it really will all depend on who's available for them at 24, which kicks off a domino effect about the order that they do draft these players. Because you have to stay true to your board. You don't want to go into it thinking we're definitely drafting this guy or dra definitely drafting this position. Stay true to the board and see who falls to you at 24. Dane Brugler's draft beast is out today. It has 1.1 million views and interactions already on Twitter. Wow. And he just put it out one hour ago. So congratulations already on that. I want just your overall thoughts. You talk to a lot of people. I want your overall thoughts on the Cowboys off season and, and what other people around the league are saying about it. And are we overreacting to the lack of anything here in the Metroplex from what Jerry and Steven have not been doing? You know, it's tough because obviously uh, money is the issue and uh, you, can always, you can always fudge things, right? You can always move money around and, and few people know that you know, better than uh, the Cowboys and, and the Cowboys fan base. Uh, but, you know, I, I think based off of what some of the things Jerry said um, uh, this off season about how this is the time we're going for it, you know, all the excitement for the future, but then, it, it was kind of a letdown. I, I, I can understand based off of what Jerry has said that there really hasn't been any action in the off season. But you know, realistically speaking, there's just so, only so much you can do. And this has been an, a team that usually waits and kind of waits, lays in the weeds, waits and see. Okay, Stephon Gilmore is out there. Okay, we'll go make that move, or you know, we make a make this trade, and so. We'll see what the Cowboys do between now and the draft and then what they do on draft weekend uh, to make this team better. I can understand the uh, lack of excitement uh, from the fan base, but, you know, uh, realistically, realistically speaking, there's only so much you can do with their current situation. So I I'm really focused on how they can get better in the draft. I think there's a lot of different avenues they could go. Um, and so if I'm, if I'm a Cowboys fan, that's what I'm focusing on, what they're going to do at 24, what, what are they going to do in the second round? What are they going to do on day two? How are they going to make this team better on draft weekend? Because there's a lot of different ways they can do that. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, how the board falls with them and what they think they should do. Will there be a QB available at 24, one of the top uh, six QBs? And if there is, would you? I, I, it'd be pretty shocking. Uh, that's for sure. I, what I know, um, you know, I think you, you you ride it out. And if there's a quarterback there at 24, there's a, there's a reason uh, he's available at there at 24. I'm not the biggest Bo Nix fan. I'm not the biggest Michael Penix fan. I think they could be 
I think they'd be solid starters uh, in the NFL, but I, I'm not sold that either will be top 12 to 15 quarterbacks in the NFL, and, and that should be the goal. So, no, the Cowboys are going to ride with Dak, um, and, and I think that's what they should be doing, build up the roster around him, and then, uh, you know, if you have to worry about quarterback next offseason, then so be it. But uh, you got to go, go for it right now. Is there a is there a guy in the draft like a, like an athletic freak? Doesn't matter if there's like a DK Metcalf that you know has this immense upside that people aren't really talking about. Sure, I mean every year we've got these guys right who uh, maybe go under the radar a little bit. Um, you know, guys that uh, are really just good football players, but also have freaky athleticism. You know, Andrew Phillips from Kentucky is one of those guys. One of my favorites this year. He'd be available some probably in the third round. Um, you know, Jared Wiley from TCU is a really good tight end uh, that could be in that mix. Uh, Jaden Hicks from Washington State, safety, who, in my opinion, is the best safety in the class and doesn't get enough lo- enough love. So, yeah, this, this draft, uh, there, there's plenty of guys to get excited about on day two, day three, that are not really being talked about a ton, but have a ton of potential, a ton of ability. Um, and I tell you what, I... I Trust Will McClay. I, I really feel like he under his him and his staff have put this organization in a spot where they can hit big on draft weekend, develop their guys, and it's it's the right formula to have. And so I, I think they've got the right people in place to do that. Dane, uh, you have roots here at Draft Roots, so you know of the Blue Star Special, the second round pick, um, the uh, the character or the medical red flag guy who who slides down the board a little bit. Give me give me a couple names that that might be there around the second round that could be in the running for the Blue Star Special. Well, we got to start with Jonathan Brooks, right? Yep. The, the running back from Texas, ACL. Uh, in, in my opinion, the best running back in the class. He's the only running back I would consider in the top fifty uh, this year. Um, so I, you know, he's he, on track to be uh, healthy before training camp. Uh, the Cowboys uh, surgeon did the did the, the surgery for him, fixed his knee. So nobody's got better information than the Cowboys uh, with with Jonathan Brooks. Um, he's the one that would make the most sense, uh, especially with when you look at this team and the running back position, what the depth chart looks like right now. Uh, it's you know, he's a he's a Texas kid. The character's off the charts. He was in the middle of a career year for the Longhorns before he got got hurt. So the one that's blinking in red lights, uh, definitely Jonathan Brooks. It's just a matter of, okay, does he does he fall to the Cowboys at, what, 56 in the second round? Does he fall that far? And if he does, uh, do they take him? Another guy would be Peyton Wilson, the linebacker from NC State. Uh, double-digit surgeries in his background. It's uh, a, a lot of medical information there, but this team needs a linebacker, and he's a pretty good one. So. It's all a matter of uh, what do the doctors say? Thumbs up, thumbs down. If it's thumbs up, look for Peyton Wilson to uh, potentially be an option. Dane, who are the best and worst drafting teams nowadays in in your view? Uh, I mean, the Eagles, the Ravens, uh, those two teams really stick out every year as uh, bang for their buck, value, getting good players. Um, uh, You know, I I think uh, the Cowboys would be up there for sure. I mean, we look at – just this roster and a lot of homegrown guys, uh, you know, I, uh, frustrations uh, aside with some of the things that have happened on the field, this is a team that has really uh, drafted and developed. And so they, they deserve a lot of credit for that. And it starts with Will McClay. Um, so I think the Cowboys are up in that mix. Um, Steelers have always been high. So, you know, I think it's not a mystery why the good teams are good. Uh, obviously, the quarterback matters. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is, is the reason the Chiefs are a perennial Super Bowl contender. But then you look at what that front office has done around him. Uh, you know, they've drafted really good corners, so you can let a luxurious need walk out the door and still have a really good secondary. Um, you know, that offensive line, the way they built that up. So uh, it, it's. I think you look around the league and you see the teams that are winning. It's really not a mystery. Uh, yeah, they, a lot of them are good quarterbacks, but the pieces around them have been uh, drafted, homegrown, developed. Um, it, it's uh, it's really a recipe for success that a lot of teams use. We've missed you. Congratulations on the beast yet again. Cannot wait to follow you uh, as the draft kicks off, and we'll be catching up with you again very soon. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Can't wait, guys. Take care. Dane Brugler on the DNM Leasing Hotline here on Sean and RJ. Our path to the draft coverage on your home of the Cowboys is brought to you by Pluckers and 
zero res.